I'm not feeling 100% right now. Regardless, it's important to get these episodes out, and since I'm going to sound a little bit strange, and the room that I'm in is not usually where I record, I thought it might be interesting to do a mini-series. This is the first of four episodes. In 2010, I became aware that there would be an offer for a unique experience, and drawing on the fact that I had wanted to do something like this for many years, I leaped at the chance. It was an opportunity to go on a six-day cruise with a centralized theme, and the name of the cruise was Joko Cruise Crazy. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Daniel Boyd, Jeff Atwood, Eric Vitello, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. The name Joe Co. Cruise Crazy comes from the song Tom Cruise Crazy, which was written by Jonathan Colton. Either you've heard of Jonathan Colton in some way, or you haven't at all, and nothing makes sense if you don't know who Jonathan Colton is. A developer by trade, he was like many other people who would play guitar or make music on the side, songwriting and dreaming, like many musicians do, that his music would become his main job. That dream came through for Jonathan when he created a project called Song a Week, creating a new song and recording it and releasing it every week for a full year achieving multiple goals worth mentioning. First, this breakneck pace ensured that he had to hone his skills as quickly as possible, creating a song each week, often in a different style and with a completely different feel to it. Also, it was very useful for determining if he had the chops to keep writing songs week after week and not lose energy or focus. He didn't lose energy. He didn't lose focus. From this catalog of created works, along with a willingness to perform almost everywhere, including online virtual spaces and homes, caused his name to grow, until, after a while, he had a significant following. Jonathan Colton built a full career, with albums, appearances, and most importantly, a recognizable, quality brand name. When Zay Frank closed his one year of experimental video, it was Jonathan Colton that he tapped to sing along with him at the end. When popular science needed an official science troubadour, they reached for Jonathan Colton. And perhaps the biggest break of all was when Valve Software tapped Jonathan Colton to write the ending song for their game Portal, ensuring that his musical style was in millions of homes. When he was looking for venues to perform at, Jonathan Colton put out a very interesting offer, which was, if you were willing to pay freight and a number of other fees, he would come to your home and perform for whatever audience you could put together. You could literally order a Jonathan Colton bespoke concert for your home. While that may or may not have been successful, it shows that he was willing to try new things, to go in different spaces, to not let himself be locked into being one kind of musician, one kind of performer, through one kind of venue. And such that it was that one day Jonathan Colton polled his fans and asked if maybe, just maybe, they'd be interested in taking a cruise with him something where he would get together a bunch of guest artists and perform songs and have songs and events all through the cruise, stopping off at different luxury locations. And it turned out that the audience was interested. But what to call it? Well, among the songs that Jonathan Colton had become famous for was a song called Tom Cruise Crazy, talking about the unique world that Tom Cruise lives in. So it was natural that they would shift it to Jonathan Colton Cruise Crazy, Joko Cruise Crazy. Like a lot of really large projects or conferences, it was a bunch of ideas put together on a web page promising that they would do the best by you, but asking you to book your tickets as soon as possible 
to be able to allow them to negotiate the best rate and the best kind of cruise and the best features for this planned event. It appears, although there is no official record of this, that my partner and I were the very first two people to immediately buy tickets, sight unseen, on the day of the announcement. Years of watching Jonathan Colton and the way he approached his projects told us that whatever it was going to be, it was going to be interesting. So, for the very first time, I was going to go on a Caribbean cruise. Now, this wasn't the first time that I had considered going on a cruise. If you've not been on a cruise, and it's a hazy set of ideas as to what this could possibly be like, that describes how I felt when I first read about the geek cruises. These were cruises in the era of the peak of Slashdot, when a series of cruises were offered to dot-com enriched Slashdot readers who might be interested in being on a cruise with Linus Torvalds, Richard Stallman, and the creators of a variety of programming languages. Either that sounds wonderful, or that sounds devastatingly dull. Regardless, it was interesting to me, odd, weird, but at the time, a hesitancy to travel too far and try too many new things prevented me from signing up. As I grew older, I felt a little bad that I hadn't even given these cruises a chance, so the concept of a cruise around a musician that I really enjoyed, well, second time's the charm. But as a technical person, somebody obsessed with process, decisions, choices, and the way that an event is organized for an industry that had been around a very long time, there was an awful lot for me to take interest in. The experience of learning about a cruise and making decisions is a series of shocks. The first shock is the price. We'll set that aside. They're expensive. By any measure, they're expensive. I'm sure there's ways to get fantastic deals on them, but walking into the front door, or even walking into an organized discount for a group, is monetarily intense. Things you would expect to cost two figures are three figures. Things you expect to be three figures are four, and so on. Choosing your room is a contraption of compromises, decisions, and coming to terms with what you're comfortable with. Discovering where on the ship your cabin might be, how much that cabin costs, and different fees attached to it, is a journey into numbers. Cruise ship design, and we'll get into that, is an experience in itself. The terminology is odd, but setting aside the cabins that you would have to borrow an incredible amount of money to be able to stay in, there is usually some sort of cabin within some sort of your price range. After choosing your cabin, the cruise lines give you what can only be described as a plethora of a la carte choices. Experiences, events, and add-ons for every stop along the way, for events on the ship, for gifts and other services that you might want to buy, tours on islands that you'll be landing at, to additional meal experiences that you'll get when you disembark onto the beaches. It might be a class that your kids take, or a voucher for a massage or a party while the ship is on the sea. The whole thing gave me a feeling of my first days learning about my college and all the different classes I could take and all the different things I could potentially do, keeping me awash in possibility, leaving me quite open for disappointment or surprise when reality hit. The Joko cruise team also gave us things to think about as they added more and more acts convincing people to sign on. As we were already bought in 100%, it didn't make any difference, but it was always a pleasant surprise to find out some of the names, known or unknown, that would be on the boat with us for the week. These months of anticipation, I think, were core to the Joko Cruise experience. A message base was set up for members to talk about what they were going to do, 
different discussions were had about which of these add-ons and optional tours were actually good or ones you'd want to avoid. And of course, for those of us who had never been on a boat for six days through the Caribbean, there was the mystery of whether or not this was something we were going to really enjoy or if it was something we were going to regret as soon as the ship took off. All cruises have a point of departure. This is a place that you have to get to. And then they open the ship for hours, loading people in, checking passports, checking health, and providing those of you who are very new to the seafaring experience the rules which you're going to have to follow. Sometimes the destination of the cruise is different, but a lot of these cruises are round trip, ending up exactly in the place they took off of. Joko Cruise Crazy was going to disembark and return to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So that's where we flew down, got a hotel, anticipated what the next six days would consist of, and getting a very good night's rest, as best we could, in a cheap and probably dependable Fort Lauderdale hotel. And so it was, on the next day, on Sunday, we moved down through a cacophony of cars and trucks and shouting people, and ships larger than I could have imagined, ships that seemed like there was no way they could stay afloat, up and down the docks, awaiting entry, and thinking to myself, as we walked up this beautifully carpeted gangway, that this was either my best idea or my worst one. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to James Bekoyanu, Mark Pilgrim, Peter Healy, Emilio Oliveira, Ernie Hershey, Michael Rubin, Matt Reynolds, manx Sean Kelly, John Sturm, Trixie the Cat, Dileep Reddy, and Anonymous, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere, who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. Buying into this cruise on the first day, no questions asked, represent a way that I live, or at least used to live, where money was a concern, but not an overriding one. I was there to plunge into a thing that had never been tried, be there when it failed or succeeded, enjoy myself to the hilt, and know that I was there, at the beginning, meeting the kind of people I met all of us completely unaware of what was going to happen next, and maybe, in some way, finding community there. A mutual understanding that everything was on the table, and everything was up for grabs. The disadvantage of this is that a cruise is in every way a luxury expense. It is difficult, without a lot of effort and a lot of considerations, to not spend thousands of dollars on a cruise. They are designed to take as much money as possible to provide you with the options of upgrading, ever upgrading, until finally you discover, or at least your family or accountants discover, that you have spent an incredible amount of money. For me, it was worth taking the leap. Now, perhaps, having crawled out of debt and crawling out of holes that I myself in many ways dug, I understand that Perhaps that my days of leaping in with fists of cash into a great unknown are probably over. Certainly it would have to be something so unique, so unusual, so fleeting, that money wouldn't be a consideration. But I don't see that happening any time soon. There's no regret in this. I've had incredible adventures, and I think, ultimately, I've built a life now, thanks to you, free of debt, that holds in itself joy and thrill without, I would like to think, breaking the bank. This was Part 1 of 4.